there was uh, some talk that Clarence uh, may improve on their position last year, but they've obviously got a bit of uh, work to do over the next couple of weeks, Walter, if they, they want to get back up in the, in the run for the title. Yeah, Andrew Brown's got a very young side, Jeremy. It takes a while for young players to become accustomed to playing at the highest level. OK, we're going to take a, a look at the game between University and uh, Glenorchy Knights here. And the man on screen there is what everyone's, talk, everyone's been talking about him, is the Brazilian player, Igor. What, what are your thoughts on uh, the Brazilian signing, Walter? I think he has shown some nice touches, but I don't think he's dominated games, as one would expect an import with the sort of reputation that was built up about him should have. He scored one goal in his first appearance, but he missed an absolute sitter in this game. Alistair, when you were playing, uh, you touched on it briefly uh, before the start of the show, you said that there were a lot of players, um, or high calibre players, internationals that would come down and, and play in the Tasmanian League when you were about. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think we need to see more international players being attracted to the game? Yeah, for sure, and I'm sure it would lift the standard. Um, I mean, just looking at Glenorchy Nice, which were the old uh, Croatia in the old days, uh, I mean, they had, I think they had more Scotsmen playing for them than what Cali's had. Um, so there was always a lot of different players coming in uh, from the mainland and uh, people who were born and brought, brought up in soccer and uh, a, good, a lot of good players. And sadly, I think that's maybe one of the things that's missing on mod, you know, in the modern Tasmanian soccer, that it just doesn't seem to be the people coming through. Uh, from the mainland for whatever reason, uh, and sadly it's maybe the standards maybe not as good as it you know as you like it to be. So sort of thing, but it's easy. It's all you know. It's easy for me to say these things. Um, but I just after looking at the game on Friday night um, and thinking back to say the old uh, zebras or Juventus days, there was no Johnny Jenny Beezies that could take the game with the scruff of the neck. Uh, these types of players, and uh, you know, sadly as I said. Um, they're not there at the present moment, but uh, again, they, you know, maybe if things change, uh, they can, you know, lift the standard. How did you see the, the game unfold today, Walter? Was it a, a case of a lot of missed chances? Certainly, the Knights had 26 shots compared to University's nine, and they couldn't get a goal. <coughs> they hit the woodwork twice. This, and there was an interesting penalty incident. University actually scored. They had the ball in the net, and you'll see it coming up now. But the referee after initially awarding the goal, went to talk to his assistant, came back and awarded a penalty to University. So, in a way, that's dis... I mean, it doesn't help the referees with, the, with their job and reputation, I guess. No, it's disadvantaging the scoring side. Here we go now, you'll see the goal. The referee awards it. Mm. Do we know what the penalty was for? Well, I assume it was for handball. There was a player lying on the ground and he must have blocked the shot. So now he's awarded the penalty, which Uni scored, thankfully for them. That was, yeah, very frustrating for, for both sides when you don't know what's going on, Walter. Yes. Um, the Knight supporters weren't very happy, I can tell you that. <laughs> and they, I guess they, they're very vocal and they'd uh, let their feelings be known to the referee. Yes, but the Knights had more than enough chances. We missed out on uh, three to four goals. We hit uh, three posters. Uh, I thought uh, some decisions also went uh, against us. I was very, very happy actually with the way that we actually played the game. The first half I was really happy with this. I thought we played well. They came out for 15 minutes and we got on top of them, got a goal, which I thought we deserved. Our defence held up. It was a bit scrappy, but three points is three points. I took them anywhere I can get them. Okay, Walter, I guess uh, that's a wrap up of, of the highlights that we've had. We'll probably now move into, into the ladders and uh, where are the teams sitting after round two? Well, the Knights dropped from first to third as a result of that defeat and the Olympic have continued their good form and they've moved to the top of the ladder. The results are Tilford Zebras 1, King Lions United 1, South Hobart 2, Clarence United 0, Metro 3, Hobart Olympic 6, University won, Glenorchy Knights nil, Taruna won, Newtown Eagles won. So it's Olympic at the top, South Hobart second, Glenorchy Knights third. I guess we have a look at the ladder now as well, Walter. Um, Hobart Olympic sitting on top. Yeah, two good results and a very good goal difference. They've scored nine goals and considered only five. Kingborough Lions are rooted at the bottom there with only one point. 
Okay, and Alistair, uh, you're going to take us through the, the uh, results uh, from up north in the in Northern Premier League. Okay, the first one was Launceston City 3, Northern Rangers 4. Good to see a Rangers team winning. Uh, Riverside Olympic 0, Prospect Knights 3, Burnley United 3, Launceston United 2, and Devonport City 7, Ulverston 1. So from those results uh, the weekend, who's uh, sitting on top of the ladder up uh, Well, Devonport City are there, which is no surprise I suppose. Uh, Prospect Knights, Somerset, Northern Rangers, Riverside Olympic, Burnley, Launceston City, Ulverston and Launceston United. Um, some of these teams are familiar, as I said, when I played against them many years ago. I mean, Devonport, I think, always had a good team. And I noticed it's Chris McKenna, Tommy McKenna's son's playing. Well, Tommy McKenna was one of the best players that we played against many years ago. And as I said, it's uh, some other teams there, Prospect Knights, Somerset, uh, Riverside Olympics, good to see them. Burnley United as well, minis again. We had uh, Walter, you remember back in the old days with... Um, Mike Denton, yes. who played for Australia. That's right. Launceston City near the bottom of the table, I yeah. that's a surprise. Yeah, well that was the old Launceston Juventus years again. I mean, um, they were a top team. In fact, my last years in Cali's, we beat them to win the state league. Well, that's uh, that's the show for this week. Uh, thanks for coming along, Alistair. It's uh, great to have you here and uh, your knowledge and experience uh, on the show. Thanks for having me. And Walter, uh, as a closing credit roll over, uh, we'll take a look at the reserves match from Friday night. Yes, that was the curtain raiser to the main match, of course. And Tilford Zebras won that one 4 1, and Dylan Fennell scored a hat trick. You may get a call up uh, to the senior side next weekend, they need some goals, Walter. They certainly do.